is a is just an adjustable rope calves and, and I, I like to, to use them when I'm training not to hold the horse's mouth shut but to, to have something on there that will have some resistance when they, they open their mouth because if if we get a horse trained unintentionally by not having something like this on See, this is what essentially that the hackamore does initially. It trains the nose that, that whenever when we pull, they bring the nose. If we don't have something over the nose and we, and we pull just the lower jaw and they open that, that lower jaw, then we just train them that as soon as they feel pressure, they open their mouth. So this just allows me to, to be able to, to prevent a bad habit of gap in your mouth from coming into play. And uh, then we've got a tie down here. And the tie down to me is a tool. It's, a, it's not something that I want a horse to depend on. So to me, it, that if, if you're going to use a tie down as a training tool, it needs to have enough um, sharpness about it that they don't want to stay, they don't want to lean on it. So I don't, I don't use one of those real wide ones that they can push up against. I want to, if she feels this tie down, I want her to come off of it softly. And uh, some horses, like she has proven to be, uh, tend to want to get her head up higher than I want and she tends to hollow out in her back when her head comes up, and then I lose my ability to communicate down to her feet. And when that head is up in the air and, and, and the back is hollowed out, you're, you're just pretty vulnerable. So there's too big of an opportunity right there, in my opinion, especially on one like her, that minus the tie down, she could she could escape me out there, and then, and then inadvertently I might train her to do something I don't want to do that I'm going to have to fix later on. So if I've got this on from initial, then hopefully then we can arrange it to where she gets in a thinking frame of mind. She keeps her body in a position of, of agreement and we don't have to create a hole in her that we got to fix later on. So put that on. When I'm putting the bridle on, I'm going to put her nose all the way through the head stone. Like that. You know, then I change hands, and then I come underneath and I get a hold of that bit, hold that bit in my finger just like this, and my thumb is gonna go inside her mouth, and then I'll lift that, that bit up into her mouth when she's licking on my thumb. But again, the first thing I do is take her nose through the headstone, and notice that I've got it coming up between her eyes, so I'm not touching her right eye, and I'm completely away from her left eye, Changed hand. I've got my right hand on top here now. Put my left hand down here, and then I put my thumb where there's no teeth. And while she's licking on my thumb, I lift lifted the bridle up into her mouth softly. Now I take this here, bring it forward, real easily. Put that head stall over. Bring this here forward, up and over. Be careful not to pull her hair. Be careful not to poke her in the eye. So the, the more comfortable I can make this bridling process, the less of an event it should be. If if you hurt them in the process, well then it becomes a big event and you have trouble getting brought on sometimes with a whole lot. Okay. So now with the length of this tie down should be that when they're comfortable, there's no pull in that. When they're comfortable with their nose tucked and, and, the, and they're just standing naturally, it's not pulling on her at all. And, and that it's there not to hold her head down, but to be there to remind her to where, to where to put her head to get comfortable. See, when she raised her head up, it says, no, don't raise your head up, just come down. So that's, that's the way I like that. Thank you.